It's okay. Everybody is here. Okay, we can first start uh, maybe to introduce ourselves. Uh, maybe, maybe for those we were not present this morning. Um, maybe you can start. Thank you. Uh, so my name is Sename Kofi Agudinou. I'm architect and uh, anthropologist and uh, founder of uh, Wella, which is the first fab lab uh, incubator co-working space of Togo, West Africa. Hello, I'm uh, Gaël Langevin. I'm a sculptor designer and I'm uh, the creator of uh, InMove, the first uh, 3D printed humanoid robot full size. Hi, my name is Laurent Toutain. I'm associate professor at Telecom Bretagne and I'm working in the I IoT domain, so mainly with IPv6. And hello, my name is uh, Benjamin Tank. Um, I'm a co founder of uh, WeShare, which is a um, <coughs> think tank, a non profit <coughs> uh, focused on the peer to peer and collaborative society. And I'm uh, doing some uh, informal research. Uh, on distributed fabrication that may uh, translate into a, a PhD next year. And I'm also working on a POC21, which is an accelerator for uh, open source hardware sustainability. Okay, thank you. And I am Norbert Friand, in, ta in charge of uh, digital projects on development uh, for uh, the city um, on the metropole of Rennes. They Thank you, Hugh. They asked me to come, uh, and so I come. Uh, I'm working with Norbert in the Rennes metropolitan area, and we both are, are working in the in the meeting of the territory and the creative forces, uh, using uh, especially uh, digital uh, potential. And uh, we are both co-founder of the Fab Lab of Rennes. Thank you, and we are more than happy and honored to be in front of you. And I think we will try to make you participate. And I would have liked to start um, considering that uh, uh, at this moment of history, um, we can say that with certainty that open source hardware is economically viable. But after this morning, I am not quite sure. <laughs> Isn't it? Uh... Well, uh, it is viable. I think it is viable when you start to think of uh, small hardware, like electronic devices and things like this. <clears throat> but at the point where I am now, uh, producing big parts hardware, um, I, I didn't find uh, the economical way yet. So it is still something to study and to um, to be. To, to view. Okay, but and I ask a question to the to to uh, everybody. Sorry, to um, everyone. Uh, what um, for you are the key characteristics of your open hardware business models? Uh, thank you. Uh, we we work a lot with um, with e-waste. And the problem with uh, e-waste is is this one: you can you can really sell the product you 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 build uh, because uh, in um, in a Wafat, by example, you have some element from Microsoft, some element from HP, etc. So instead of try to sell uh, the product we develop. Uh, we we try to think about social programs for NGO, for schools, uh, etc., for hospital, and try to put this th those products um, in the service of this social program and try to have finance for the social programs. So we are, we 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 want money by launching social programs. And not directly by selling what uh, we, uh, we do. Yes, the value is not in selling, but maybe more in services, in community, etc. Yes. Yes, so I'm a happy guy. So 
I, in fact, uh, we work a lot on IPv6 for many, many years, and we did not know how to make money about uh, this protocol. And for IP, it's very difficult because you make money on selling stuff like routers, you make money or on selling application or doing application on top of it, but you don't make money on IP. But if you don't have IP, you don't make money anywhere. So you, you have to develop something that is uh, generic, that everybody can use, but the value is not on, on that. So the value is above and or below. So that's a, that's a big problem for uh, this kind of uh, of layer. So you have some business model. For example, in the IP community, you have uh, an association called ISC, uh, Internet uh, Consortium, that develops some protocol that everybody needs, like uh, DHCP, DNS. But the, it's an association, and everybody that needs this, instead of developing it by itself, uh, put money on this association. Provocative question, yes, but for Cisco, uh, the value is on IP. No, the value is on the box. So the way you implement IP is the way you, you sell the box, but the protocol by itself is something that has been to be deployed everywhere, because if uh, Cisco, Cisco uh, was using IP and nobody was using IP, they will not make money, of course. But the, what is important is how to... So, for example, for Laura Fabian, what we have to do is to deploy this, uh, this protocol everywhere if you want to have a standard. But the money then will come from above and below, but not from the, the effort of deploying this standard. Um, we we had invited here um, a French uh, working with a startup in the field of open source uh, hardware named Emmanuel Gillot, very known in the field of 3D printers, and um, he couldn't come, but uh, uh, he's very interesting because his um, his society is named Open Age, and uh, he tried several, not one, but several economical models, who are uh, in fact. Uh, tryouts. He, he tried to find new ways, and um, perhaps uh, I can describe to you five or two or three of this uh, very interesting model. Uh, in the first model, is based on the. Uh, he didn't create the, the, the company. First, he had a community because he was making plans and prototypes of open source hardware with um, uh, something that made a concurrential advantage. Uh, for example, the foldable uh, reprap. Uh, so first, he has something who has an advantage and or several advantages. Um, secondly, uh, this thing, uh, he tells to uh, himself, okay, some people are upgrading this, some people are building this, but many people who would like to get the printer, whole printer, like a product, and to upgrade the printer with a community later. Some people want just to buy 10 or 70% of the bills of material of the printer, so get, for example, uh, the, uh, the screws only, or the screws and the electronic board, and so on. And some people uh, would like to have a whole kit to build uh, the printer. In fact, the first thing was to use crowdfunding to test the ID before uh, buying anything to sell. And it's something we observe today that is very interesting is that many people who, have, who are trying to find if it's uh, valuable, if it's scalable, are um, trying to uh, transform their community in a crowdfunding dynamic in order to buy themselves or pass their time only if they are sure that they can do it, okay, economically. So he made this uh, with a folder wrap 3D printer, and uh, it means that many people were buying the folder wrap, he bought uh, the bits of material, he sent uh, the things about the bit of material with a worldwide community. But in fact, when I spoke to him, I realized that he was traveling a lot, not only to show the machine, but because when he come to a city, the people having the bills of material, the folder wrap, are making workshops. He made the people pay for, so your services model is very interesting because the, the, the fact to be sure that it works and to know the people around you that can help you to make it better after using the, 
open source worldwide system because you can uh, give a phone call and you say, okay, help me because there is an update, an upgrade to the machine and we are going to make it ourselves. You can meet the people with Emmanuel in the cities. So it's not only uh, an object, it's a service he can sell with it. Third thing, uh, the program name La Semeuse. In this crowdfunding, there were some printers you could have without paying it. The system is you, uh, you engage yourself to print the, the 3D printed parts of the printer for eight customers. If you engage yourself to print eight parts for eight customers of Emmanuel, you've got a free printer because you're a part of his factory. It's very interesting system. I don't know if it works, but La Summer succeeded and the people printed the parts and Emmanuel sold the parts. Fourth, um, fourth thing interesting, um, he uh, realized that it was with industrial partners very interesting to work for metal uh, parts of the printer. And so, uh, okay, do it yourself is good, but I need more, more parts with professional using tools you can't have at home because it's very interesting for it, many people about the costs. So you've got online the way to build it yourself, but you can buy him at very low cost parts. So he works very classically with a company and this company is making metal parts for the printer. This company is a big classical company working in the uh, uh, in the field of metal um, metal industry siderurgy voilà siderurgy merci beaucoup uh, what is funny is when you look on the website of, the, of this company you have now the metal parts that you can buy by 400 1000 pieces for other B2B industrials and in in on the website you see strange things. These strange things are new 3D printer parts created by the community, printed by the 3D printer of Emmanuel, and on the website of the Siderurgy vendor. It's totally strange. So it's not. I'm not speaking about the the, the big models of Sparkfun, Adafruit, so, and we'll speak about it shortly. But what is interesting to see is that also is selling services, workshops, um, learning pedagogy, rapid prototyping, but is not selling only totally built printers, only like a product. And when something new happens, he always try to test with the community to get a 1.0 version working with uh, people who are very interested in and then he launched the first step of crowdfunding and this first step of crowdfunding uh, give him a feedback on the scale of the customer market. I think it's an interesting way. Yes, you are right, Hugh. Uh, we are more spoken about uh, open source value network than open source hardware in fact. But you, uh, Benjamin, you have observed uh, a lot of models this morning. It was very interesting. Um, please tell us uh, for you, what are the main barriers you can observe uh, in the different projects uh, we have around the, this uh, circle table? No, this rectangular table. Um. Well, um, the the one for Wafate, I think you yeah you, you said it clearly. It's because you you cannot sell the um, um, the recycled um, parts by themselves. So you you have to find new models like building programs and workshops for um, institutions and uh, and uh, enterprise and uh, and so on. Um, <coughs> I think on the in move. So I hadn't really thought about the case before. So it's just an intuition. I think um, there is always um, like you cannot apply any, every business model to every product uh, because some products are more uh, market friendly, consumer friendly, for instance, which is maybe less the case for an, uh, for uh, InMove. I mean, if I want just to think of the case of InMove, I think for me what I what I see is a, a really fantastic. Um, 
experimentation R&D platform for uh, many stakeholders, so research institutions, uh, companies, startups, uh, IoT companies, whatever, who want to to maybe use it as a platform. So I think intuitively, if I try to to um, to rely on something I I, I know, uh, I would maybe try to experiment in the platform uh, uh, type of business model, which is when where you try to aggregate an ecosystem on a common open source platform and to create value by uh, bringing these people together to, to, to build something on top of your platform. And then uh, maybe there are some of the stakeholders uh, who clearly have more money than the others and would be uh, able to support you and maybe you can, uh, they could, uh, it can be a fee or it can be a, uh, supporting or I don't know. Um, and some others, uh, they don't have a lot of money but they create a lot of value and they get a lot of value back. I mean, they, they take a value and they give it back and so they can uh, use the platform for free. Uh, or maybe just like putting peop uh, these people in touch. Like if, you're if you look at OpenDesk, it's like a platform that puts in touch the designer, the maker and, uh, and the customer. Uh, open source vehicle, it's more about uh, launching mini projects where you have one, uh, one mini ecosystem that uh, comes together to build a specific prototype of, uh, of the vehicle. So you could also imagine that for the, for the robots. But I think for me, intuitively, I would go to in, uh, in this direction, trying to, to have it as a common development platform for uh, people that want institutions and organizations that want to work in, a, in a robotics and experiment with robotics, I think. But Probably it needs more uh, discussion because uh, I don't have all the background. Yeah, I, hello. yeah I think it's, it, it must be something like this more than uh, just selling the parts or yeah. trying to, to produce the parts. Um, I'm, saying, I'm saying for now that I didn't find any solution. It's mainly because <coughs> I'm a sculpture designer and I'm not really working into economical system. I'm not deploying this kind of things. And it's true, I think it's, uh, it, it must be in this direction. I just need some indi indicators, um, maybe some people to help me to, to guide in the right direction. That's something I need today. Happy to talk about that. And thank you, Hugh, for uh, the examples of business model. As you know, I've also observed... I love, uh, I love La Summers, by the way. It's really, mm. uh, I, I didn't know about La Summers. It's really La Summers, uh, but... Um, it's awesome. Oh, it's really, really interesting. Okay. But one critical thing, I think, is to, um, to have money back at, yeah. at the end, in fact. And I think um, our... Yeah, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel Gillot, it's one uh, difficulty for, for him. Uh, and I've studied uh, like you, and I've uh, found uh, more than 80 uh, open hardware business model. And uh, the key success is sometimes uh, not to be uh, uh, in the same uh, line, but to jump from one line to another uh, line during the project, during the life of the project. And um, it, it remembers to me uh, the key success of uh, open source, in fact. Uh, on one thing I've not heard this morning, um, and I'm quite astonished, uh, it's um, you have not spoken about documentation and open documentation. I think it's completely uh, needed uh, to have this success, to share, to create this open value network. Kofi documentation for you yes of course uh, the, um, uh, the, the the documentation is the key of uh, an open source uh, project so uh, I'm surprised also that we don't, we don't talk about documentation all, all these day it's uh, I agree totally and you're right uh, Norbert um, uh, and uh, for example there are um, Without documentation, you, c you, you can't do or uh, upgrade anything. Um, without documentation, you can't get um, non-technical experts involved in the community by translating things or trying to explain things to non-experts. And so the non-experts are inventing new uses, cases, with technology. So I think you're totally right about that. Uh, it's so evident that we forgot uh, that uh, the, the tree was... Uh, uh, we, do, we didn't see the, the hood 
Uh, and uh, uh, for example, uh, when you see uh, something very interesting like the site, uh, uh, documentation is also um, something about uh, who can understand the documentation. And so the, the way the documentation is made has many implications uh, concerning uh, the classical economical models who are around uh, the objects and the communities. If we take, for example, instructables in the USA, uh, it's something that is very, I know many French people using this uh, English speaking website to make prototypes because you've got the files, you've got f uh, photos, videos, and it's very clear it's made for that, but around. I've got many ads of many contextual uh, open source hardware uh, products or workshops. Uh, around the tutorials and uh, the traffic, uh, which is a very classical model, the, the, the classic, uh, the, the traffic of this website is uh, is astounding. It, it's it's crazy. But if if you think about it, something like making the documentation and understand for anybody uh, with new forms, video, photography, links, simple files, uh, not uh, GitHub uh, for much simpler and. It, it, it can show at which point something like, okay, for a coder, documentation with, uh, and anybody, you have money around this kind of documentation platform now. So, uh, uh, it, 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 uh, for the moment, for example, we were speaking in Rennes about putting um, electronic uh, kits for children in the public libraries for the people. Uh, to take it and to use it with, with their children. And one of our problems was that the documentation of these kids for the moment is only in English. So it's, it's, it's not interesting for us. If the documentation can be understood for all the people and we can add, go uh, near, your, uh, near your home in the uh, workshops with the city around and so, it takes a, a totally another dimension. So you're totally right. Yeah, I agree with um, <coughs> uh, what was uh, just said. I think um, I have the intuition that one very interesting uh, initiative, but which is, I think, very complex, would be to work on um, uh, something that would be the equivalent of a programming language, basically, for, for, for making and for, and for products. And I, I have... I've I think I've seen like a several uh, initiatives trying to do that, but it's extremely complex and like they don't really know by which side uh, tackle the issue. But like on, on open source software, documentation is easy because the product is a documentation. It's only one thing and you don't need to speak French or English except for the comments in the code maybe, but m mostly it's self-explanatory if, if you're uh, knowledgeable, literate about the code. But so what would be the equivalent of that code for hardware? And I think uh, there are a few ideas out there about like this Wikipedia for making uh, platform or GitHub for making platform, uh, which could use a, a common language. And uh, I've seen a few projects. So there is like Alchemator, uh, um, Revolver, Bit, um, and uh, Knowable, and, uh, and different platforms. But it's I think it's uh, it's still uh, something that needs to be tackled because uh, yeah, it needs some abstraction I think to to understand what, how to how to read document that. Want to add? Yes. I think we all agree about uh, documentation, but we need different level of, doc of documentation because we need documentation for the beginner that needs to understand how it works and have not a lot of details but can do simple things. And we need also documentation for trained people. And I think that's uh, why Arduino is very, very good because you, you can have all these levels of documentation. And for example, we, I visit an electronic manufacturer that gives me a clone of Arduino, which is very, very similar. But when I tried to connect it, the documentation was not so cool. And so it was more difficult to enter in a really real similar ecosystem from Arduino. But so the documentation is very important if you want people to to use things, and we have also to do things simple for uh, for a better usage. And uh, I, I spoke about instructable, but you know, for example, Adafruit's industry, uh, which was uh, entrepreneur of the year uh, in 2013, 
um, has uh, be, been really, really uh, at an edge impact to find new customers, especially with the tutorials made for every kit, for everybody, and they have uh, on go every week for more, you know, ask an engineer. Uh, anybody can ask anything to uh, uh, Lady Ada uh, um, and the tutorial are incredibly simple for beginner uh, if you see spark fun also yeah. uh, so it's really uh, a key point not only to find new c customers but um, uh, especially because you know you can uh, have the attention of the people on the uh, where they are reading the documentation so you can also sell ads, you can also sell uh, extensions, open hardware extensions about the product. You can uh, make um, social galleries of what the people have built, like you show within Move, uh, around and uh, sometimes in partnership with uh, companies making proprietary systems uh, that can plug uh, with, uh, with it and they have money. Okay, so uh, um, I, I think that it's very intelligent that you said that because if we look at the major companies now in open hardware, they all have uh, very democratic uh, and strong action and money because when you you take pictures, you make tutorials, and it, it, it's time huh? and money, and uh, it's a critical uh, point, and they really make money, but it's not it's not enough. For the moment, for example, if we look, uh, we have many uh, interesting open hardware um, made uh, on the, the plants are made by community, are crystallized by an actor. This actor, uh, some, it finds a win-win with the community because one part of the community is a, a kind of customer, one part is a kind of contributor, one kind is a two, uh, another uh, uh, other one are the people who are using it because it's uh, so generic that you can make it the next product of the next product. But um, uh, in fact, uh, we must face that uh, it's, all, it's sometimes like the iPhone because you know you make the plans, but it's in China. Uh, where the things are built. So I find that it's very interesting to look at Arduino, for example, who made the uh, uh, total project where the uh, board is made in a factory in uh, Italy. And so the people are also buying clones, but they are buying real Arduino to, sus to make the community economically sustainable. And Arduino must be not too expensive, but it's always more expensive than the clones. So uh, I think it's a very interesting uh, model. Everybody is looking. No, it's not. It's impossible when you show the Arduino model to the people, but it works. No, it works. So um, perhaps there is uh, something also um, in the Fab Lab. Uh, the people are now asking us the question more and more: Where is it built? Where where does it come from? And uh, it's something that's new, and that can be be very interesting to boost. Uh, local production of open hardware and so networks of people uh, using plants in, f in, f in, in factories, local factories networks and it makes me think about what you were showing in Up City and Fab City in Barcelona and perhaps it's not a dream, you know, perhaps no real people are really paying to be sure that it's made in a way that they can uh, take part in a sustainable dynamic but can they, is it affordable? Is it efficient? Uh, and so on. OK, Hugues. interesting to develop a local uh, business, in fact. But in my opinion, um, I think that uh, your main need is maybe to have, in your business model, is to have a, a mass retail network, in fact. For example, you explain us, um, Leroy Merlin, or um, Auchan, Decathlon, they have already mass consumers. And, um, it's maybe the, the, dif the difficulty to find the scalability, the way to, to jump from uh, uh, expert less, like uh, everybody of us, uh, in fact. Uh, Madame Michu is not in the room. Um, what can we do? Um, a deal with uh, Auchan, everybody of us? Or it's, it's like a paradox, as you said, uh, Hugues. 
I have a hard time to see uh, in move robots in Auchan uh, tomorrow. I, I, I don't think it will work. Um, yeah, I mean, may maybe partnership with re retailers can can help, but I'm, I wouldn't bet on that, uh, like right now, because um, I mean, first there is the, the question also how you how you scale the production, because for right now for most projects we're talking about niche markets that are being manufactured by uh, either a third party uh, a partner like uh, Arduino with the, the three uh, manufacturers or smartphone who distribute them online and they have their own channel. And it's enough for the for the market they have. I mean, it would. I'm not sure it would make a lot of sense to have a uh, um, Sparkfun products in in Auchan, for instance. Maybe at some point, maybe maybe Arduino could uh, has reached the stage uh, to which it could be interesting to have uh, Arduino in a in a major retailers like uh, like you have uh, MakerBot uh, retail stores or this kind of. Uh, of thing, so maybe for products that start to be very well known and have uh, many many applications, it can be okay. But I think not all products have reached uh, this uh, stage, unless unless it's a, it's a product which has really like a, a user a consumer appeal, like I don't know furniture or something that uh, that that uh, that anybody can use, and which happens to be open hardware. But like for people that will buy it in Auchan. The value proposition would not be that it's open hour. It, it would just be that it's a nice furniture, and, and that's all. Uh, it, uh, it's, it's you give me ideas as usual, <laughs> and uh, uh, I uh, I'm totally convinced in what you said uh, at the at the end. Yeah. Uh, it means that, for example, if I'm I don't know how do you know I don't care about it. Uh, and I, I I won't buy an Arduino, but I want a solar robot, for example. And uh, and uh, I um, I've heard about a solar robot. I come on the internet. I see oh, this solar robot is cool and so on. And um, when I go to to the supermarket, I've got a box, and the solar robot works with Arduino because the people of, of Arduino are interested not about only Arduino, but that other uh, companies are including open source hardware. Uh, Arduino and why not other component of partners of Arduino who are making sensors, who are making solar panels and, and, and something in a box who is a robot who can also be modular, for example. So <coughs> me, uh, perhaps I will buy today this box perhaps 10% more, but uh, if I can uh, invoke the uh, digital shadow of the community to say, oh, is it cool? Uh, how many people around me are using it or so on. So 10% is nothing compared to what I, we could do with that. So I think that uh, it means that the people, uh, it's always the same thing. At the beginning, there are people, they are speaking about electronics, they are speaking about bits, they are speaking about microcontrollers. After that, there are people using uh, uh, things of robotics for hobbying and being used by academics and so on. So uh, there can be a, a movement where, as you say, uh, people, and they are trying to find it, in fact, where people, not those of Arduino, but the new companies working with Arduino in different fields uh, of cute customers about, for example, clothes, about connected objects, about body sensors, about leisure, about sailing, about anything. Yeah. Uh, these people have really interest in Arduino too, to, uh, if they want to make open hardware sustainable economically, to put it, uh, why not with Ocean, uh, in the mass market, but it means that they are not only on the next computer and so on. There must be new people making hybridation between the old and new model, between the yin and the yang that Bernard Dieter uh, told us. Maybe uh, e-move uh, consumers? New people? No, it's a joke. <laughs> yeah, ju just one. It's um, just a joke. Uh, yeah, they could. Auchan could print uh, e-move consumers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, one uh, one comment uh, because uh, also what you said gave me an idea because you 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 had a magical work word which is modularity. Uh, I think um, that maybe for like if we start continue this conversation conversation on mainstream consumers I think for a lot of mainstream consumers people who are not familiar with that open source is not like a value proposition that appeals to them because they don't know they're not uh, aware of it but if you talk about uh, things that uh, you can 
uh, that are modular, that you can customize, that you can repair easily, that you can uh, personalize, that you can uh, bring to your uh, local artisan or whatever that can repair or uh, adapt it if, it if it breaks or something. Like something that is basically anti-planned obsolescence and you, and you market on, on that. Uh, I think that could be an interesting value proposition for, for people. Because people are aware of planned obsolescence and all that. Okay, maybe you, you have some question. Um, how do you contribute to uh, open hardware business as consumers, as developer? You have some question? Any question? Somebody on the top. Can you tell us again about the free idea you have to um, for the economic part you on the right on the left side you, you talk about free ideas for to sell um, to have a viable um, economic uh, economic uh, for the open source open hardware at the beginning of the conference. Okay, I, uh, um, I took example uh, with Emmanuel Gilos because he tried several things, but around here, around the local Fab Lab, for the moment, it's very interesting. And, and, and here, we, are, we speak together with Gael, and Gael, for example, has, uh, if the robot has such a success uh, uh, in the world, not a commercial success, but a real success, uh, where the other robots are very expensive, but with people, not everybody, not in ocean, but everywhere. Um, uh, now it takes so much time to guide that he asks to himself, oh can I uh, perhaps change my time, my professional time to work on the robot and, and, uh, and on my life. And uh, I know, and you stop me if it's an error, one of the models, for example, that Gail was uh, thinking about was, okay, you've got all the plans and open source uh, of, the, of the robot, and if you are a lobbyist or anybody that ca can spend a lot of time, you have anything on the web, so it means you can print forks of the robots, or their hands, or their eyes, or something that the other uh, always make. met. If you, if you are a teacher, you are going to buy a kit, but this kit is not 3D printed. This kit is made by an industrial in a middle uh, scale uh, size, for example, I don't know, perhaps 500, perhaps 1,000 uh, of hands, for example. And uh, uh, it's not uh, things made by do-it-yourself, okay? But you can customize, you can upgrade. And so, uh, for the moment, it's very interesting because there is another um, young man who is in the village and uh, he has an inv invented uh, two 3D printers in the last months. And uh, for the second, um, everything will be online. But he wants to crowdfund on a basis of several hundred 3D printers with m plastic molded uh, parts made by a classical factory. So perhaps one of the models is to uh, <coughs> have the community upgrading the things, uh, being, uh, being helped to uh, define the 2.0, 5.0 version in the community with all the improvement, making choices, and to say with him we know that we have some steps, okay, and we can have it, but also to work with industry and having a little, middle, or big uh, series. What is very interesting is that you will buy something made by a classical factory, but you can upgrade it. Uh, perhaps at the local Fab Lab or yourself, and you can customize it. So I think it's a, uh, it's a model. Another model uh, now is, uh, is based on um, the pedagogy and discovered by the people using modular kits uh, uh, to, uh, in fact, have electronic Legos. Many of the open hardware things that you can buy are now for uh, are electronic Legos, okay? Input, output, and so you've got 
high level design like littlebits.com in USA where you buy very expensive for example 80 90 uh, dollars a kit but with this kit a teacher wants to use it because no danger easy no soldering with anybody and anybody using it can make something like a little bot now and it's a market very classical it can be you've got things in open hardware many things like this like uh, uh, some labs uh, many things and uh, the people what is funny now is that uh, this market is not new but uh, it was not before in the electronic field it's fine we can we can call it new lego techniques in open hardware with high design high cost low design low cost and it's something very interesting when you see that the people like with the legos are making working machines not only not only uh, things that are uh, funny, but walking things. I've seen um, about 10 days before in La Fonderie in Paris, tools making the people able to vote at events based on uh, children kits uh, plugged on the web through a 3G key with an English documentation. And the men set, set up this in about two hours uh, so uh, that's perhaps something interesting and after that you've got uh, all the question of what is not the object himself so what is not the object himself is customization it's very important customization now is one of the things that makes uh, business around uh, open design it's very important so if you want to customize things, it means that you, you've got a mix between community, algorithm, because it's a kind of a question of form, and standards. So uh, I think there will be a very uh, important market, uh, which is not very original comparing to the mobile application market. Because in the freemium, you are teased and you've got the files, you can do your, the basic chair, for example. In premium, you can, for example, subscribe. You can, imagine you can subscribe to a designer group of gothic people because you like gothic. And you have the right to choose two customizations in a catalog of 1,000 of objects per month. And this object, you can have them, for example, with a goodie like Meta. Uh, okay? And after you've got the next level, and if you look in the ecosystem of freemium, premium, and so on, it's not so new. But what is new is that anybody can fork it, can upgrade it, and that it's so open that even if you don't have money, you have the right in a non-commercial way to um, fork it and make it for you to work uh, concrete. So it's just three examples. Um, uh, I think that what is very interesting for this moment is that the project we saw this morning were, are all born less than three years before. Well, up two years. In move, two or three years. Laura? One year. <laughs> One year, we share. Three years. Uh, Fab Lab Doran? Two years. Um, it's uh, Adafruits, perhaps four years, Adafruits industry. It's very new. Very new. And uh, uh, it's very uh, interesting moment, like uh, at the beginning of the web. It's now that we can observe, try uh, these new models. But what I can say to you is what is very interesting is that we have many young people in the Fab Labs who are not afraid of uh, creating little companies, SCOP, uh, SIS, uh, any. Uh, uh, but they really uh, do want to uh, benefit of the iteration and fox of the users making uh, the uses case they didn't think about of their products. And in fact, they are all like com classical companies. They, they say, okay, I give me, for example, one year, and in one year, I must uh, eat. If I eat in one year, I continue. And they could uh, imagine, and it's a classical thing, to uh, got a patent, and uh, that's all.
So what is very interesting is that the people asking us, uh, is it, uh, is it uh, sustainable ecologically? They didn't ask us the question, for example, for the 3D printers and filament one year before. The people are asking, where is, it, where is it built? Other people are asking, can I make it at, at home legally? The other people, or if we, everybody is, is, is saying, um, um, uh, what could we do to have benefit of it but um, that I can afford what I put it and it lives, I'm a part of it and concretely I can upgrade. So perhaps we won't buy the, remember you don't buy your phone now. You buy the service, you buy the connectivity, you buy the access, you, buy, you don't buy your phone now. Why tomorrow you think that when you are going to have a chairs who can upgrade you are going to buy the chair? You sure? I'm not sure. Especially if the chair is not only to be sit on it, but can, for example, speak with the other chairs. Change of color. What do you imagine? We're not in a creative world now? You've, you've seen the difference of cost? So I think perhaps here, there are models, but there are, it's not new models. These models, you can, you can observe them in other fields in digital economy. Thank you, Hugues. <laughs> okay, t t thank you very much. I think time is over. And I have un uh, understood uh, with uh, all of you. Um, one question, okay. Uh, thank you, Hugues, for this very long, long, long answer. Uh, Thank all of you for the quality of your debate. My, my question is for all of you. Uh, I would like to know if there is a cultural dimension of the way we can design a business model for open hardware. I mean, what would be this debate if it would have appeared in New York or if it would have appeared in Shanghai? Do we have this, the same kind of reflection about what you say? What, what can we learn from them? What can they learn from us? You think, um, and you ask a question about uh, open, open economical uh, reflection yeah, on open sure. business. Yeah. Is it because open? We, we are uh, European, so or we are French. Hmm. I'm not sure wha that we address the issue of how we can monetize audience or how we can make money in the same way than the Anglo-Saxon do. Y you are right. Uh, we, we for example, in Rennes, on the Lab Fab, uh, we uh, try to build uh, with uh, Vietnam a Lab Fab uh, in Vietnam. And uh, we start implementation, but we are not, for instance, in the step that we can imagine um, business yeah. development. Uh, as Hugues said, uh, we are, I think, in the beginning. But yeah. uh, cultural aspects are... Um, I think uh, are very important. Um, Benjamin, you want to? Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's always tricky these questions about cultural aspects because uh, it, I think it would need more research to 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 back these intuitions. But uh, I I don't know if there is a, a a difference in the in the culture between Anglo-Saxon and French that makes that we monetize less. Sometimes we say, oh, uh, the maker movement and hacker spaces are more uh, grassroots in, the, in France than in the US where it's more pragmatic and commercial and so on. Maybe, but also like uh, like uh, Hugues said, the uh, open hardware movement is maybe a bit younger and smaller, but it's, it's, it's picking up now in France that uh, it was in the US where companies like uh, uh, Sparkfun, uh, I mean Sparkfun is maybe one of the oldest, it's like uh, more than 10, 10 years actually. I've been around for already uh, uh, a while. Uh, in France, we have uh, Snoot Lab, uh, which is a, a SME. It's like uh, six people, maybe, right now. And uh, it's a sustainable uh, a small company which makes great products. And they have a very, uh, very great community that loves, uh, yeah, say 600,000 by month? No. 600,000 euros of, uh, okay. of turnover. Yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, yeah, there is Emmanuel Gilos who tried to to um, to monetize and to build a sustainable company on Open Edge. And I'm, I'm I met recently um, a few uh, young uh, entrepreneurs who want to build open hardware startup. Like I met a guy at the uh, Open Hardware Summit in uh, in Rome, a French guy. He wants to do like. A, 
uh, Internet of Things modules, um, um, like, like a modular Internet of Things uh, connected object, but like on the open open hardware and like on the uh, it's very inspired by open desk and all these uh, platforms and he said oh, I want to do a, a platform for people and, uh, and makers and people who want to be, uh, work in the uh, open hardware model so I think there are a few people that are starting to get inspired about what works in other places and then trying to adapt it which doesn't mean that there shouldn't be any more um, um, open hardware project just uh, which are um, which will stand on profit because some are uh, supposed to stand on profit because um, they don't the founders don't want to create a company or don't or want it to stay more like as an informal community but i think we'll see more and more uh, um, successful attempts to to make sustainable uh, organization on it but uh, it's still very very new so yeah and i worked before uh, in a large company all around the world and in fact uh, the challenge was to make money on sell deliver on care everywhere uh, we don't care about culture all aspects but maybe this is the world before and now maybe we're in the beginning of something new and it's quite interesting to, to explore I uh, um, thank you uh, I must say that Raphael is uh, an expert in the field of digital e economy uh, if we knew we, we were coming here if I knew it you, you would be sitting on this chair um, uh, in my point of view um, uh, it's very uh, interesting uh, to me since uh, I, I have the chance to meet in Rennes or in some place people uh, of the Fab Lab Hackerspace uh, network because they are all using open source uh, hardware and the be Open source hardware is just something uh, open source. So we are all iterating, we are all sharing, we are all uh, taking picture, we are all trying to find business models. And uh, what is very interesting is that I'm all, when I spoke with you uh, at noon, uh, together we understand that we could share. It was we didn't say one to each other. Okay, I can share my, the plans of what, what the people. It's so evident. So it's the kind of something that is. Uh, transcendent to the culture and which is in the part of the open source uh, movement and I think it's really strong, really strong that I can uh, meet, meet people from Australia or people from Germany or people uh, from everywhere if they are using the open source ecosystem we, we, we can work immediately together using our forks, GitHub, plans, formats, machines and it's something really, really strong, no it's outside the code, it's in the object and you, you can't say it's nothing now no, you can't say it, and you, you made a great example, but no, there is something else that when you've got this power, you make things that depend of your culture. You've got the power, for example, to use the intelligence of the other, uh, and you can apply it to the concrete objects around you, depending of the sun in your country, depending of the money the people do have, depending of where you are living, depending of the culture or where you are living, you are making different things with it. It's an evidence. Okay. But you can use, and so what is strong is that because the time is money. It's okay, open. I it's must give you many money. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Last comment. I think there is maybe a small difference between uh, France and the US on uh, on the initial funding, um, because uh, I mean m my feeling is that it's uh, uh, like Kickstarter works works way better for hardware products and open hardware than uh, the Kiss Kiss Bank Bank, Ulul, which are great platforms, but which maybe don't have uh, the, the, the scale or the, or the um, so much appeal to for our web products, and also because they don't uh, um, reach out to the many uh, potential customers in uh, English-speaking countries. Um, and also maybe there is more, uh, but that I'm not sure of that, maybe there is also more investors uh, in the US that would be uh, uh, keen to take the risk to fund an uh, open hardware product than in France, but I'm not totally sure of that. But yes, but uh, French tech will change uh, the deal. Okay, as you know, Rennes has been uh, French tech it's territory, and now it starts. Okay, thank you very much. Time is over. <laughs>